Hi, everyone. Welcome to the Hogan Lovell's Chronicles of Data podcast. We're so excited to talk today about the FCC's role in privacy and cybersecurity law. For those who I have not met, my name is Scott Lachlan. I am co-chair of the Hogan Lovell's Privacy Practice. But more importantly, I am thrilled to be joined by two of my partners today, Charles Mathias and Katie Milner from our communications practice. Welcome to you both. Good to see you. I'm Charles Mathias. I'm relatively new to Hogan Lovells. I'm a senior counsel here in our group that focuses on these issues. And I come to the to Hogan Lovells after a, a relatively long career at the FCC, where one of the things I looked after was privacy and how it applied to wireless carriers. Katie, maybe I can ask you to introduce yourself next. Sure. I'm happy to be here. My name is Katie Milner. I'm a partner in the communications, internet, and media practice. I advise clients on a wide range of telecom and technology issues, from strategic advice to enforcement. And I think as we'll talk about today, that covers quite a broad swath of issues. So we have a lot to talk about. Terrific. So Katie, maybe I can first start off with you. I mean, I invited you both here today because I think we, all of the folks who are following, you know, privacy developments saw the announcement from the FCC about the development of a privacy focused task force and would love to kind of get both of your perspectives and what that means. But before diving into the task force itself, it'd be really good to just hear your perspectives on the historical role that the FCC has played in privacy and cybersecurity. So Katie, maybe you can walk through how the FCC thinks about privacy and where they see their role. Absolutely. I think it is useful to start with some of the context here to understand what the FCC is trying to do today with this privacy task force that we're going to talk more about later. The FCC's authority over privacy stems from a couple sections of the Communications Act of 1934 as amended. Section 705 of the Communications Act is one of the most fundamental and oldest sector-specific privacy provisions that we have. It protects the privacy of information carried by the communication service providers. And it's pretty stunning, actually. As early as the 1960s, the FCC was considering how to protect the privacy of data over shared computing resources. And that interest is only built up in the 80s and 90s when the FCC started looking at how your incumbent telephone service providers, your landline providers could use and share customer information. So at this point, we're in the 90s. In 1996, Congress enacted an amendment to the Communications Act that included what is commonly known as Section 222, and that provides statutory protections to the privacy of data that all telecommunications carriers collect from their consumers. So when you hear people talk about uh, your telecom carriers and the term that's used most often here is CPNI, Customer Proprietary Network Information. So this Section 222 has some protections for how they can collect, use, and disclose, and um, what sort of transparency requirements apply, what sort of breach notification requirements apply. That all stems from our Section 222 authority of the Communications Act. I think this will be relevant to know as context, too, is that the FTC, as compared to the FCC, also has a role to play in privacy. The FTC's work is mostly focused on the transparency of privacy practices and honoring customers' information about privacy. The division of responsibilities here is that common carriers who are subject to the Communications Act are exempt from the FTC's Section 5 authority to address privacy practices on the internet. So that's a distinction that comes into play at, at different times when we're looking at what the FCC is trying to do. So Katie, that's really interesting. And I and I want to maybe just go back quickly to what the first thing that you said is that, you know, the statutory authority first came in from a law that was passed in the 1930s. Mm. Obviously, there's been many significant technological changes since the 1930s. But what I heard you say is that the FCC in carrying out that statute or being the primary enforcement and regulatory arm under that statute was considering privacy going back to the 1960s? That's right. Yep. Yep. When the idea of networked computers was just just starting to be a gleam in people's eye, that was how long ago these issues came up. There's a very 
old article from the FCC dating back to the 60s from what was in the Common Carrier Bureau looking at these issues. So the idea of privacy is not new, but it's had to evolve over time as our technologies and our expectations have evolved. And so then, you know, as as the statutory you know framework continued to be updated, I think you said in the 1990s there was this the advent or the introduction of 220, which resulted then in the ability of more specifically regulating CPNI. Yeah. So for those who you know, I think a lot of folks have heard the term CPNI, but I think there's a, maybe a little bit less fewer folks can actually define what that means. Can you maybe just define for us kind of what types of data in particular constitute CPNI and are more directly within the scope of the authority of the FCC? Yeah, absolutely. I think that's helpful to understand what the FCC is trying uh, to accomplish now. So CPNI is information about the telecommunication services and subscribers. That's derived from the relationship between your telecom company and the subscriber itself through that carrier customer relationship. So when we're talking about CPNI, that means the phone numbers that a consumer is calling, the frequency, the duration, the timing of the numbers dialed. It also relates to the location of the mobile device when the consumer is using it and the services that are purchased by the consumer. There are carve outs to the privacy of CPNI for things such as responding to a government subpoena or doing some kinds of wiretapping. But generally, when we're talking about CPNI, this is what the FCC considers to be sensitive consumer data that should be in large part protected by the carriers and not disclosed. And the consumer should be notified when this information is breached or improperly accessed. So I've always thought about it, and maybe this is wrong, but it's you know CPNI and the layman's way of thinking about this information that would appear on a phone bill. You know, back in the time where you actually received those things in paper, maybe maybe you know it's a less of a useful example nowadays. But still, is is that kind of maybe a helpful way of thinking about it? Yeah, yeah, I think that's absolutely right. And you can still get the PDFs if you log into your account and want to see your phone bill. So there is still a, a way to see it. Okay. And so for that CPNI, that has been the core focus of the FCC and its regulations. And I think you mentioned a moment ago, and, and maybe it helpful to amplify, what are the types of regulations that the FCC has put forward with respect to CPNI, how that may be used, how it may be disclosed? And I think you mentioned a moment ago about to what extent, uh, what happens in the event of a data breach. So the current CPNI rules focus on a couple of broad topics. I'd say transparency, you know, what consumers know about how their data is collected and used, data security, and the data breach notification. So the FCC has rules and companies who process and store and handle CPNI should be aware of these about when there is a breach, what do consumers need to know? What's the time frames for letting the commission know as well? what is being shared with law enforcement about data breaches. And this has been a continual process as we were talking about as the technologies and the expectations around privacy have evolved. And as recently as January of this year, the FCC proposed even more robust CPNI data breach notification rules that would more broadly define breach, would decrease the amount of time to notify consumers and include mandatory reporting to the FCC. Yeah, I'd love to dive into that a, a little bit more. But you know, maybe Charles, I'd love to add you to the conversation now. You know, one, I frequently will come to you, as you know, and ask, you know, well, who is actually subject to the FCC? Because you know, the great legal system that we have in the United in the United States. So we don't do things consistently for everybody. And so as a result, you know, statutes and regulations will have unique application to certain types of entities. So all of the CP&I rules that Katie was mentioning a moment ago, maybe you can spend just a few moments talking about to whom these rules apply. And then I'd love to start talking a little bit about how more recently the FCC has gotten into the, the privacy debate. Sure. And, you know, it's this is one of the perennial topics. I think, as Katie pointed out, there's been an interest at the FCC in protecting data, protecting privacy that goes back a long time. And I think that there's been a, a discussion of how and how much, and the how gets to your question, who can you actually cover? And as Katie pointed out, it, the CPNI rules clearly cover common carriers. 
your traditional phone companies and, and now the mobile companies. And in, in as much as they're ex excluded from the FTC's jurisdiction, you know, that puts a lot of burden on the FCC. The newcomers, relative newcomers at this point, not so new, but the are the data companies, the broadband service providers. And for a variety of reasons, they are not today subject to complete FCC jurisdiction. The previous administration under Chairman Wheeler tried to assert jurisdiction over broadband internet access service providers. And that was reversed very quickly at the beginning of the previous administration by Chairman Pai in that commission. And that undid the work that the Wheeler chairmanship had put into place. And one of the fundamental things that it did with respect to privacy is it changed the way, again, that the commission could look at privacy. And the Wheeler administration, in the very final days of its term, published an extensive privacy order, report and order that covered all the issues at, that we're discussing today and how they would apply more universally to include the broadband providers. And that was reversed under the Congressional Review Act action by Congress within the first 30 days of the Trump administration. So that went out the window. So we're back to the environment that Katie described. But there has been a persistent interest in doing things. And that was signaled by the fact that even as the Pi Commission reversed the internet rules that, that were adopted under the Wheeler administration, they specifically said that the transparency rules that date back even as far as Chairman Powell, so over 10 years, still are in effect, and they codified them in their report and order. And it means that all kinds of service providers are still on the hook to explain clearly to their customers the terms of service, how they manage their network, and also to report data breaches. Fascinating. So I'm hearing and saying, like, you know, Katie's telling me that you know, the interest of the FCC on privacy started, you know, going back to the 1930s, kind of started, you know, really taking shape in the 60s, you know, then reinforced and more specific on CPNI in, in the 90s. And then, Charles, you're, you know, as, as we start to think about how the FCC has been thinking about it over the course of the past 20 plus years or so, it has been around almost expanding the potential application of these rules to not traditional type of telecommunications companies, but to broadband companies and other companies that are central to the way people access the internet. Is that fair? That's, that's very fair. I think that it would be unfair to all kinds of commission members uh, from all political stripes to say that this wasn't a concern. It's just a question, again, of how and how much. And I think right now you're seeing in what Chairwoman Rosenworcel is trying to do, a resurgence of an interest in trying to do more because they're, you know, I think both the FCC and the FTC are criticized for not doing enough in this area, you know, potentially because the authorizing statutes are, you know, are old. And so you have two chairs that are improvising and I think there's an interest in in filling what many people see as a gap in the protections that are available to consumers and others. Yeah. So the analogy between with the FTC, I think, is really important. Obviously, the FTC has been enforcing its Section 5 authority for unfair or deceptive trade practices and applying that to privacy for, for some time. But those statutory authorities as you pointed out, are quite old. The FCC is largely doing the same thing, but for a different regulated group of, of companies. That's right. And at the moment, the FCC, because of the action in the previous administration, the FCC has not asserted this type of authority over the IP world, the broadband internet providers. And courts have said that the FCC has the authority to do it under the existing statute if it wants to, but it has to subject them to the traditional regulations and regulatory environment that applies to the traditional telecom carriers. And many, many different commissioners have expressed concern about doing that. And so the Wheeler administration tried to come up with a balance where you applied those rules, but then applied them in a very light touch way. 
And as I said, very quickly in the Pi administration, that was reversed. Yeah, I mean, I mean, we'll get to the task force in a moment, which maybe is the current way that the FCC is trying to enter back into this debate after some of the, the congressional activity in the early parts of the Trump administration. But before doing that, you know, one of the things that you're describing around the hesitancy to engage in the more formal rulemaking process, or perhaps the, you know, the ways of, of actually, you know, creating a more robust set of rules is I think what we see with the FTC, which has largely, you know, used its enforcement authority to create a precedential set of consent orders under its section five authority, which has then been used to establish a set of expectations and almost kind of a set of common law and case law that defines what constitutes an unfair trade practice or a deceptive trade practice under the FTC. Is there an equivalent of that under with the FCC, or is that an area that they haven't dove into yet with respect to privacy? I think the equivalent is the Enforcement Bureau. And the Enforcement Bureau typically takes a broad view of what it can investigate. And if you recall that, you know, we still have the transparency rules that apply to everyone, and you have the CPNI rules, and that somewhere in the conflation of those two issues, there's probably something for the Enforcement Bureau to be interested in. And, and that's, I think, what you see going on today. The Enforcement Bureau is, you know, operates in a very, very confidential way. You, it, it's not a public process. Um, and you, you really don't find out what their thinking is until after they have reached a conclusion and either taken something forward and there's a resolution with the subject of the investigation or not. But I think that's what you see happening. There are these investigations that we've talked about the new task force, that's where the FCC is exerting what authority it has. Yeah. And I'd add that that use of that enforcement lever, in addition to the other tools the FCC has, has been consistent across administrations too. Yes. Chairwoman Rosenworcel noted um, in announcing the task force that the previous administration had assessed forfeitures of uh, over $200 million against entities that were um, improperly disclosing geolocation data. So that's a mechanism that certainly the FCC uses to communicate its priorities and to uh, protect consumers. And I think that'll surely continue. And I think, Katie, I think one of the interesting things is that you look in Congress and sort of the general view of privacy seems to be evolving. And, you know, I, I agree with you completely that that's what the chairwoman is doing. But I also think that depending on how that manifests itself, you know, might find some support on the commission. And also the oversight environment might be different than it was even a few years ago when the concern about privacy was not as broad based. So with that, maybe Charles and Katie, I'd love to get your insight on the working group or the task force in particular, which I think is maybe the chairperson of the task force comes from the Enforcement Bureau. It's the head of the Enforcement Bureau. So let's start there. What do we know about the task force, its composition, you know, who is, is leading it, and maybe where the aims and objectives of the, of the task force will, uh, will lie? I think as we understand it, the Enforcement Bureau is a little bit opaque, but according to what the commission has announced, it's going to be an internal working group. It's not going to have external parties, not external members, which means it can be more focused and more confidential. And my sense is that they're going to be looking to the experts across the commission in the various different modalities of communication, as well as in the different types of breaches and other violations of the CPNI rules and other privacy concerns that have been manifested over the past few years. And they're going to be looking at those people and say, okay, what did you learn? And how can we do something better to protect people? It will probably have regular meetings and it may take a while to reach deliberations. And I wouldn't be surprised if it didn't inform in some way an attempt at rulemaking. Katie, what do you think? Yeah, I think that is where things are going with the announcement here. It's as clear a signal as you can get that the FCC wants to be doing more on privacy and that they view the role in privacy as more expansive than perhaps other recent administrations have been, or at least certainly the FCC led by Chairman Pai at the time. I found it very telling with the announcement of the task force, the sorts 
of ongoing proceedings that are going to be explored via the task force. It's not just CPNI, though, finalizing this year's earlier proposal on revised data breach notifications is one of the, the tasks that the task force will be working toward. The FCC also noted that the task force will be working on addressing the problem of SIM swapping, which is a problem where malicious actors will call up your wireless provider and convince them to transfer your number to a new SIM card that they, in fact, control. We saw some very newsmaking instances of SIM swapping with regards to transferring crypto assets in the last year. And so the FCC has proposed requirements that would require a carrier to authenticate the user before switching phone numbers, switching your number to a new device or carrier. So SIM swapping is not necessarily what you think of as a privacy issue, but it was one of the proceedings that the chairwoman teed up as something the task force would be looking at. And I think, you know, it, it, this is consistent. I think we need to, I think we need to be informed as well by what Chairwoman Rosenworcel has been doing generally about data security, supply chain security, national security, because she has really taken a forceful role in having the commission take strong steps to address what are perceived both inside and outside of the commission as being areas that could be improved. I mean, data breaches, how did that happen? Was it because you got hacked? Was it because you had a bad piece of equipment? Were you neglectful? Things like that. She's shown great leadership and all of these things sort of roll together in what you can begin to perceive as a policy direction that includes strong protection of data, strong protection of privacy, and more secure networks. From your perspectives as kind of being specialists in the space, what should clients, what should organizations who follow the FCC take out of the development of this task force and where the FCC may be going as a result of the task force? Well, happy to kick that off. I think that at bare minimum, the task force is going to be issuing a report, but I think the more likely scenario is issuing greater rulemaking proposals, opening proceedings, maybe notices of inquiry to learn more about what companies are doing with respect to privacy practices, and to reiterate, more enforcement of these things as well. So I think companies need to be watching very closely at what the FCC is doing on privacy and be prepared that the signs are pointing to a more active role, to more regulations, and uh, more enforcement. I would agree, and I go back to, but it's not just privacy, it's not just CPNI, and it's not just the traditional carriers. I think you can see a trend to focusing on, were you diligent in, in all aspects of managing your network such that you didn't have a privacy breach, that there weren't hacks, that there weren't those things. And I think that any company that is using or considering using data should take extra care to make sure that they can tick all the boxes and have good answers if the Enforcement Bureau comes knocking and says, did you think about this? Why did you do this? So in other words, if I'm getting that right, Charles, the key is as clients are trying to anticipate where the FCC's views on these issues to the extent those are not known. The key is to really pull in those traditional principles of privacy by design, cybersecurity by design, you know, that we often hear in within the privacy community as so key and important to meeting obligations under other laws and how we are trying to instill those what I hear you saying is that is equally important and maybe even more important on the FCC side, given where the focus and energy seems to be going. I think so. If, you know, if clients haven't done a recent checkup on those issues and are not, you know, fully conversant in how they would describe the design they use to protect privacy, you know, if they don't know who the suppliers of their equipment are, you know, whether it's something as simple as a Wi-Fi device that they might install and make available to their customers or something much more intricate, you know, I think if those types of equipment, those types of practices lead to a breach, I think there will be questions. Yeah. Katie, on that breach point, one thing I heard you say a couple of different times, and I just want to make sure we have a chance to talk about it, is that in addition to the task force, one of the things that I think has come out this year is actually proposed data breach notification rules 
uh, that are coming from the FCC. Can you spend a, a moment talking about what those rules are and, and where we are in that process? Sure. Yeah, I think that's of, of great interest to clients, actually, because different agencies and different sectors have varying rules for data breach notifications. And part of what the FCC is doing here is trying to better align its rules with other recent developments at the federal and the state data breach laws covering other sectors as well. And we're all aware that in the aftermath of a data breach, there are a lot of to do's related to not only remedying the issue, but also complying with the government requirements um, and the state level requirements. So I think these FCC rules are designed yes, to align, but it's also has the potential to impose new burdens on folks who are experiencing the data breach, particularly in the short term. So the FCC already had data breach notification rules when there are breaches involving the CPNI that we talked about earlier. And now they are looking to um, expand what counts as a breach to also include inadvertent access, use, or disclosures, rather than just malicious bad actor type breaches. They're looking at a harm-based trigger for notifying customers. Is that appropriate or, or should customers always know when this type of information has, has been accessed? The FCC also wants notifications directly to them in the immediate aftermath of a breach, whereas before the framework was to notify the Secret Service and the FBI in advance of perhaps notifying the FCC, that notification would now be contemporaneous. And they're also had previously been a rule about notifying customers of the breaches. There was a mandatory seven-day waiting period between when you would notify the Secret Service and FBI and customers and whether that should be amended to be sooner in many cases. So I think this reiterates what we were saying that the FCC is looking at how much do customers need to know? How much does the agency need to know about data breaches and in what time frames and with what level of specificity and rigor to make sure? And this comes on the heels of you know, several news making data breaches over the past couple of years. So the FCC is watching this and they will also use, in addition, you know, rulemaking is one of their the tools in their toolbox, but also enforcement on the back end. So I think companies need to be aware that the FCC is a sector that's going to be looking at this too. And that in your checklist of, of things to do and in the immediate response of a data breach, FCC should be on that list. And maybe Katie on that point, you know, we're taping this uh, in June of, um, of 2023. And at the moment, uh, a number of our clients are experiencing the aftermath of a supply chain cybersecurity issue involving MoveIt, where a threat actor was able to exploit some zero-day vulnerabilities within a secure file transfer system that allowed for massive amount of information to potentially be compromised and a number of organizations to be impacted and as I read, you know, where the FCC statements are, including with respect to this task force, Charles, is that they're very much focused on supply chain management and supply chain cybersecurity. How does that play out, you know, in terms of how the FCC is thinking about its breach notification rules or proposed rules and their ongoing focus for enforcement? With, I think you will see across administrations a focus on the FCC's fundamental duty to ensure the integrity and security of national telecommunications networks. And that's at the beginning of the act. It's the beginning of the rules. I think you're going to see that duty, that statutory obligation just reasserted itself across the board in these areas that you've just discussed. Yes, I agree. This is the commission is going to be looking at this carefully. And it comes back not only to how and how much, but also who. And I think you know, it'll be interesting to see how Chairwoman Rosenworcel answers the who question, because that's an open issue right now. Terrific. Well, I, it seems like there is a lot more that is going to happen in this particular space. I think you've made that case quite compelling to me. And as a result, I think, you know, it's some an area that we need to follow quite carefully. And I know that both of you are. So hopefully we'll have another opportunity in the future to take an update as to where we are when the FCC and with respect to privacy and cybersecurity. But really appreciate both of your time today and sharing your expertise. Thank you.